Uh, this is Mayor Shea. Are we on? Is the recording on? Yes, Mayor, it is on. <laughs> Thank you. This is Mayor Shave. It is Wednesday, March 24th, 2021 at 747 p.m. And I call the Aberdeen City Council meeting to order. Public comment period is included during the Zoom video meetings. The public was notified that if they wish to speak during the meeting, an email be sent to Patricia Soule, city clerk, and indicate if they would like to speak or have the clerk read the comment. If they desire to comment live, they will be called on during the meeting and allowed to speak for three minutes. Written comments have all been provided to city council members. City Clerk Sol, would you do a roll call, please? Councilmember Andrews? Here. Councilmember Ellis? Here. Councilmember Francie? Here. Councilmember Gordon? Here. Councilmember Cashman? Here. Councilmember Kennedy? Present. Councilmember Mackey? Here. Councilmember Richrod? Here. Councilmember Ross? Here. Councilmember Shaw? Here. Councilmember Short? Here. Mayor Shave? Here. All present. Thank you. Mayor Shave? Council President Shaw, you have the floor. Thank you. So um, the council may recall that at last at our last meeting we attempted to amend the minutes, but um, apparently I didn't quite get it right. So we're going to try it again, and they've given me a script. So if you'll bear with me, I would uh, move to amend the minutes of the March 10, 2021 council meeting, deleting the amendment to approve the minutes of the February 10th, 2021 and February 24th, 2021 council meeting and adding the correct motion to amend the minutes of the February 24th, 2021 council meeting, adding a second to council member Kennedy's motion to close the public hearing on the annual project plan for the 2021 stormwater management plan. I would uh, move to um, adopt the amendment. I'll second. Motion has been made and seconded to uh, adopt the amendment. Any, so under discussion, any? we need to establish who made the motion and who made the second. The motion was by Kennedy, but who was the second? Does anyone remember who seconded the stormwater plan? It was public works. It was probably somebody from public works, right? Usually Joshua seconds everything. Yeah, I'm not sure if I did that. As a second, so it didn't record that. <laughs> so the amendment it would be to add council member Francie as the second to the motion on the you cut out this is Patricia who did you ask to have us added? council member Francie okay motion was made and seconded and Right. Amend, the, amend the minutes as described to add council member Francie as the second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the amendment say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. So now uh, I would have uh, accepted a motion to approve the minutes as amended. So moved. Second. second motion was made by Deanne, seconded by Liz to approve the minutes as amended. All in favor, or is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The moment the motion carries. Thank you. Um, Thanks, everybody. With all of that, did we also approve the minutes of the previous meeting? No. Not yet. I, okay. So, Mayor Shave? <laughs> yes. I would move to approve the minutes of the previous meeting. Second. 
Motion was made seconded to approve the minutes of the previous meeting. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Um, if anybody's in the audience with their uh, mics not muted, would you please mute them? Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda is additions or deletions. Does anybody on the council have additions or deletions? See none, I have an uh, a, uh, appointment to make to the Building Code Commission. I needed two council members uh, and I would like to appoint Alan Richrod and John Mackey to that commission. And I will bring that up then at the uh, appointments if the, the council approves. I so move. I'll second. Thank you. The motion was made and seconded to add this uh, appointment to the appointment section of the uh, agenda. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, now we'll uh, move on to public comment. City Clerk Sol, is there any pl uh, public comment? Yes, there is, Mayor. We have one individual, um, Denise Anderson, that would like to make her own public comment. And then I have a, a public comment that was provided by Patty Tom Thomas that I will be reading. So I will let Denise Anderson speak first. So I'm going to put her aloud to talk. Thank you. Denise, you have three minutes. Hi, can y'all hear me? Yes. Um, good evening, uh, Mayor and Council Members. Um, I'm Denise Anderson. I'm from Hopeland. I'm a union representative for UFCW Local 367 uh, that represents some of the grocery workers in town, uh, Safeway and Swanson stores. Um, I'm not here to tell the personal stories of the workers. We'll let them do that. They have been doing that on their own but I did wanna share some comments with you. Um, studies show that grocery workers are five times more likely to contract COVID. In fact, there've been several COVID cases among workers in the local grocery stores. Many, many workers have been quarantined due to exposure in the past several months. Grocery workers have been called frontline workers. They've been deemed essential workers. Safeway even called them in one of their team newsletters, heroes. They gave them hazard pay for a short time, then they took it away. Hazard pay is additional pay for performing duties, hazardous duties, or work that causes extreme physical dis discomfort and distress, not adequately alleviated by protective devices. For grocery workers, the hazard isn't just about potentially contracting COVID. It's about the possibility of being verbally or physically assaulted by a customer who refuses to wear a mask or gets angry because they've been asked to step back to observe proper social distancing. It's about the stress and discomfort of wearing a mask for eight hours a day, about working in a department where you can't properly social distance for eight hours from your coworkers or customers. It's about hoping every surface has been properly cleaned and sanitized when they get word one of their coworkers has COVID and they hope they don't contract it and take it home to their family. Yet through all of these hazards, day after day, week after week, for over a year of the pandemic now, they've shown up. They show up to serve the community, doing the jobs they're asked and paid to do, but under the hazardous conditions they didn't sign up for. I sincerely hope you will consider drafting and passing an ordinance that allows these grocery workers the hazard pay they so deserve, like other cities have done and many, many more are considering doing. Thanks for your time. Okay, um, whoops. So now I'll read the comment. Good evening, Mayor Shave, City Council and public that are in attendance. It may be wise to take the time to study the Washington State Department of Commerce shelter program overview. What we have now behind City Hall is a low barrier shelter. Review the, review the rules of the City Aberdeen set forth and be aware that the tassel operates totally outside the rules the City of Aberdeen required. 
The city has found they are unable to enforce their own rules. The city council has had adequate time to solve this issue, but has done nothing about the rule enforcement of their own guidelines. To subject the citizens of Aberdeen and allow, and all towns in Gray Harbor County is questionable at best. The reason the low barrier is the choice is because that is what the county requested in writing. There was no request for a dry shelter. It should be put to the vote of the people what they prefer in their own town. Regardless of who they state pays for it, the bottom line is the taxpayers pay for it out of the dollars they earn working hourly. County commissioner, commissioners Pine and Warren are requesting looking towards a dry barrier shelter that aids people in recovery. This would help more, this would help move people into a new way of living, not continue as they are unprepared for daily life in a humane manner. Requiring others to care for their daily living needs is not healthy for anyone. It brings the person down, despondent and depressed. They need the guidance, education, compassion and help improving their conditions and learning how to become a self-able person. Lisa Scott spoke to, at the stakeholders meeting yesterday at the Grace Harbor County Health Department. She had an enlightened heart to the conditions and the results at Tassel. And I would like to thank her for her productive input. Is it correct for the city of Aberdeen to draw up a resolution without input and review of the citizens? Would it be better to give the people the representative voice in the decision that affects all people, not just the 12 people that are actually at the service to represent these people? Should not consider having even a town hall meeting or any means of communication with their con constituents. Please consider the results that will have an impact on the lives of all the people and the families that live with the results of your choices. Patty Thompson, Aberdeen Ward 4. And that's the last comment that I received. Hello? Mayor, you're on mute. Sorry, thank you. The famous words of 2021 and 2022, or 2021, probably through 2022, you're muted. So I was saying, moving on to the agenda to item five, City Council applications, applicants for vacancy presentation and question and answer. We have two candidates that submitted their qualifications to the city, Mr. Melvin Taylor, Mr. Jesse Cole. And at this time, I would like to open up the floor for Mr. Melvin Taylor to begin uh, his candidate introdu introduction. And then there will be time for uh, candidate questions later by the council. Uh, Mr. Cole, or Mr. Taylor, you're first. Hello, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I would like to be a council member. Um, I would like to help Aberdeen move forward. I would like to be a part of a team that is looking for solutions to our city's problems as well as helping our community. Um, there's so much out there that needs to be done and, and I believe being a part of the city council, I'll be a part of helping um, progress our city and find all these solutions that are needed as well as the fact is I'm a chemical dependency counselor and I really uh, see a lot of the chemical dependency issues and mental health issues that we have here on the harbor. And I think with my experience in this, I could be a good uh, helping member of the city council to help um, work towards solutions. You're muted. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Famous words, huh? <laughs> certainly. Should we uh, open the floor for council questions to Mr. Taylor at this point or wait until after? What, what would the council prefer? Let Jesse give his introduction first. 
or that seems fine. Why don't we, we let can... Mr. Cole speak and then we can ask questions to either yeah. one of them. Very good. I agree. Uh, Mr. Jesse Cole, you have the floor to introduce yourself. Well, hello. Um, can, you... can hear you. Okay. Um, okay, great. Um, you know, I can't be interested in becoming a city council member because I work with uh, a home. You're breaking up. And I see a lot of. Uh, it's very garbled. We can't yeah, understand what you're saying. Can. I'm sorry. Let me let me try to adjust my mic one second. How does it sound now? Is that any better? Well, that yeah, is better. I think so. Okay. Um, well, let me start over then. Um, I work at the Coastal Community Action Program. I'm a, I'm a lead care coordinator there, and I work the homeless population and I see that as a major issue that's impacting this for housing. You're all broken. I know that, that that's um, I know a lot of things that are on the south side where I live they, um, Mr. Cole your your audio is breaking up again or, uh, that's breaking up really bad. I think it's the connection. Uh, it's most likely oh, your man. internet connection. I I don't well, know what I, uh, Mr. Cole, I don't know what's happening when you talk to us like you have to fix this <laughs> or can we hear you. It comes in really good. And then you start speaking and then it starts fizzing out. I don't know. Huh. Super frustrating. I'm sorry. Did you you know, when let you me try to. That, it sounded perfect. So I don't let know me talk I... slow and I kind of get a little uh, <laughs> talk a little fast sometimes when I get excited. So let me try to talk slow and speak as such see if this works. Um, well, I live on Southside. I work with a lot of the homeless individuals in my role at Coastal Community Action Program. And I see that, um, you know, Tassel was in the in the comments earlier. And I think that um, all of that stuff needs to be addressed. I used to be a homeless drug addict. I'm now a, a care coordinator there you go. There it just went out again. I'm hoping that I could utilize that and bring that to the team so that um, we might be able to understand the problem facing better we can um, overcome that. I see a lot of infrastructure opportunities on Southside that could bridge the college and, and Southside a little more appropriately to where they're sitting. I know this Breaking up again. You know, I like to serve in some other capacity. I would love to, uh, you know, serve with some civic duty and, uh, you know, take part in in Aberdeen's growth. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry that my my audio connection is not as well. I'm very surprised because I recorded a podcast with the same equipment, and it's just uh, I don't know why it's breaking up. But, um, you know. I am very ambitious and I would like to, uh, you know, work with you guys if I can to make a better Aberdeen. And I, I see what, you know, working with the vulnerable population, I see where the gaps are. And if I could, if we could all work together to bridge those gaps, I think we see a lot less of the stuff going on, what's going on, um, we can kind of, um, you know, make more scattered side and, uh, you know, helping people. And, you know, there's so many, so many for town. Be, it's going out again. Comes and goes. Well, if we only had high speed internet here. Okay. I, our, uh, Council President Shaw, I know you were working on this quite thoroughly. Did you have specific questions you wanted to? Uh, start out or do you want the council just to be free to open with well, questions? Thank you for asking Mayor Shade. What, what I was trying to do was make sure that, you know, the council had some basic information beforehand with the questions and answers that went out today via email so that we didn't take up a lot of time asking, um, you know, some basic things that could spend our time getting to know the candidates. So I don't have 
Okay. Any additional questions to um, add to what I worked on? It's um, it's up to the council to see what else they might like to know. Okay, thank you. Does anybody on the council have questions for either or both of the candidates? Council member Ellis. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mr. Cole and Mr. Taylor, um, both of you seem to have a um, pretty comprehensive background with dealing with um, social services. Can you tell us what other areas of interest you have and that you would um, also want to work on other kinds of issues as a council member? Maybe um, Mr. Cole, Cole, if you would go first. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of things for um, on, the, on the south side. I think that there's a lot of um, like ecotourism that we're not really taking advantage of that we could be. Um, you know, there's a beautiful area for hiking and running and these and bikes and this kind of thing. They, uh, we broke up again. That area, I think this, that would be huge, a huge thing we could do. That would be on a huge level. Um, Right. Maybe on that trail that goes along the river, um, the south side. Right. You know, there's just a, uh, you know, I don't, I don't have a lot of experience in politics or running a city, but I see things in the city that, you know, with right now to, you know, be part of. Take your mic again. <laughs> Oh, how you find the what is what to the table? Council Member Kennedy. Uh, just really quick, I just wanted to interject because I know that um, Mr. Taylor uh, also needs to uh, answer Liz's question, yeah. but the issue that Mr. Cole is having, I can, from what I'm hearing, it's his internet connection. So you might want to check that, make sure that nobody else is like streaming. Uh, like a high resolution video or gaming or something like that. So it's not your microphone, it's your internet connection. Did you copy that, Mr. Cole? Yeah, I, I did copy. I'm sorry that I'm having uh, this issue. I don't know. I have like the most expensive internet package. It should be, should be working. Let me, um, I'll be back in one sec. I'll just make sure the kids don't got like the gaming on or something like that. Thank you. Uh, Briefly, as an attempt to assist this, Ms. perhaps Mr. Cole could use one of the telephone call-ins. It's not the same, but there is a telephone call-in that, that should have been provided with the Zoom invite, and that might um, resolve some of those issues as well. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Council Member Ellis, would you mind repeating your question because we and I had some time for Mr. Taylor to answer. Um, yes, Mr. Taylor, um, in addition to your background in social services, can you tell us please, what are the areas of interest you have and um, other, other contributions or issues you would want to work on as a council member? Thank you. Okay. Um, so I have, I also have a master's in public administration and, um, I believe that like Mr. Cole said, there are so many things in Aberdeen and in this area that are beautiful and could be absolutely, uh, used. We, I, we live on the coast. We have beautiful beaches around here. Aberdeen, I feel could be a hub of sorts for people to come through. I think we really need to work on a lot of our infrastructure here, as well as cleaning up our area and making it inviting to people for them to come here. So once we establish that, then we can move forward towards bringing people in. I also believe that um, our 
ability to make Aberdeen uh, sustainable and more economical would work towards bringing more employment opportunities here. And I think that I could, as a council member, really help in these areas. Um, I've had like, like uh, they were saying, a lot of work in the uh, social services field, but I've also worked um, as an intern uh, for one of our senators. So mm -hmm. I, I do have a lot of experience in these areas and I believe would be a beneficial member. I've seen a lot of other cities uh, struggle and come out of it. And I, I really believe we can do that as well. All right, thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Cole, I would like to offer you another half minute or so to kind of refresh your answer if you think you have the problem fixed with your mic. Uh, there's people when had all kids off their Netflix. Do um, the problem well, not fixed. Really, uh, I caught the the tail end the of what. Oh my goodness! How embarrassing. Hmm. Yeah. You're still breaking up. So let me just ask, are there any other questions from the council members? I don't see anybody. So I am going to move on to uh, item six on the agenda. Mayor Shea? Council President Shaw, you have the floor. I would move to recess into executive session for 30 minutes to evaluate the qualifications of a candidate for appointment to elective office and to consider the selection of a site or the acquisition of real estate by lease or purchase when public knowledge regarding such consideration would cause a likelihood of increased price. Action is expected after the session. Um, so I, I thank you. Motion is made and seconded to recess into executive session. Uh, any comments? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We will recess for 30 minutes. I hope I make it. <laughs>
The executive session has been extended. Council will return at 9.07.
Okay, this is Mayor Shave. I show 9.06 p.m. Uh, I, we, we're done with the executive session that we can uh, uh, <laughs> go back to our regular meeting. I so move. Second. Motion is made and seconded to reconvene the city council meeting. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. It is now 9.07 and our council meeting is back in session. At the uh, end of the council meeting, the last item on the agenda is the uh, uh, appointments and the appointment number one will be um, the new council member uh, appointment. So moving forward, uh, finance committee, Chair Catchman, you have the floor. Good evening. Just one second here. Finance committee met tonight, earlier tonight at 6 p.m via Zoom and um, just basically discuss the items that were on the agenda tonight. So moving into approval of expenditures, I move that we approve the expenditures and payroll. A second. Motion was made and seconded to approve the expenditures and payroll. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, this will be a roll call vote, please. Councilmember Andrews. Do you have to read the amount first? Oh, yes. So uh, motion to approve accounts payable in the total amount of 594-816-62 and payroll in the total amount of 95,769. Check numbers 25079 through 25088 and 72515 through 72675 and wires 1246. The roll call vote. Councilmember Andrews? Yes. Councilmember Ellis? Yes. Councilmember Francie? Yes. Councilmember Gordon? Yes. Councilmember Cashman? Yes. Councilmember Kennedy? Yes. Councilmember Mackey? Yes. Councilmember Richrod? Yes. Councilmember Ross? Yes. Councilmember Shaw? Yes. Councilmember Short? Councilmember Short? I don't see her. Well, I don't see her. Might not have made it back. Okay, so approve with all present, accepting Councilmember Short. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda is a report from Finance and the Parks Director recommending that the City Council authorize the Mayor to sign the Grant Award Agreement form with Grays Harbor Community Foundation for the Little League Field Remodel Project. I move we adopt this report. I second. Motion was made seconded to adopt this report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The report is adopted. Thank you. Next, we have a report from the finance from finance and the parks department recommending that the city council accept the twenty thousand dollar tourism grant and authorize the mayor to sign the contract with Grays Harbor County. I move we adopt this report. I second. Motion was made and seconded to adopt this report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. The report is adopted. And next we have on the agenda a report from Finance and Corporation Council recommending that the Aberdeen City Council approve amending AMC 5.10 business licensing and registration to comply with state law and the contract with the Washington Business Licensing Service. I move we adopt this report. 
I second. Motion was made and seconded to adopt this report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. This report is adopted. And finally, under ordinances, tonight we have the first reading of bill number 21-02, an ordinance amending Aberdeen Municipal Code 5.10 regarding business licensing and registration in compliance with revised code of Washington 35.90 municipal business licensing to participate in the Washington State Business License Service for general business licensing. I move we accept the first reading. I second. Motion was made and seconded to accept the first reading of this ordinance. Is there any discussion? See none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And Mayor, the Miss, Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry, uh, point of clarification. So this moves past the first into the second reading and there will be a public he hearing then at the next meeting on this ordinance, just for the record. Thank, Thank you. you very much, that's yeah. correct. And that is all from the Finance Committee this evening. All right, thank you very much. Council Member uh, Kennedy, Chair of the Public Works Committee, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good evening, everybody. Public Works Committee met on Tuesday the 23rd at 4 p.m. via Zoom. We discussed our agenda items and I will comment on uh, some of those specifically as they come up under discussion. Uh, additionally, we had a really good conversation about uh, other ways to uh, uh, get information out to the public and one that has been really underutilized is we have the ability to add a flyer into utility bills that are mailed out uh, and it does not have a significant cost. So uh, we're gonna look at uh, getting some information together that uh, could be helpful for everybody and start utilizing that. <clears throat> and without further ado, cause we have so many today, <laughs> we will get to the report. So first we have a report from Public Works and the Public Works Director recommending that the city, the Aberdeen City Council shall pass a resolution adopting the city of Aberdeen supplement to the 2018 Grays Harbor County multi-jurisdictional hazard mitigation plan as an annex to the currently adopted hazard mitigation plan. I move we adopt this report. Second. Motion was made and seconded to adopt this report. Is there any discussion? Uh, just under discussion, this is mainly addressing some new requirements that came out after the prior resolution was passed. So we're just uh, fixing it up a little bit to make it compliant. Okay. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of this report say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, this report is adopted. And next we have a report from Public Works and the Public Works Director recommending that the City Council shall authorize a total expenditure of up to $120,000 for the attempted early acquisition of up to three parcels for a planned capital improvement project. I move we adopt this report. Okay. Motion is made and seconded to adopt this report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The report is adopted. And next we have a report from Public Works and the Public Works Director recommending that the mayor or his designee be authorized to make bids at the Grace Harbor County Sheriff's sale in April of 2021 for a total amount not to exceed $170,000. I move we adopt this report. Okay. Who seconded, Josh? Who seconded that? I think that was Frank. Okay, thank you. Motion is made and seconded to adopt this report. Is there any discussion? Mayor, I would like to make a motion to amend the amount on the report from $170,000 to $200,000 based on our discussion in executive session. Second. 
Okay, a motion was made and seconded uh, to uh, amend this report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the amendment say aye. 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 Any oppose? The report is amended. Now we'll vote on the um, report as amended. <laughs> I so move. Second. Motion is made and seconded to adopt this report as amended. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any oppose? The motion carries. The report is adopted. It was amended from 170,000 to 200,000. Okay, and moving on, we have a report from Public Works and the Public Works Director recommending that the City Council shall authorize the Mayor to sign Amendment 2, granting a funding date extension to SRF loan agreement for the construction of the new disinfection system at the wastewater treatment plant. I move we adopt this report. Second. Motion was made and seconded to adopt this report. Is there any discussion? See none. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone, any oppose? Motion carries, this report is adopted. Okay, next we have a report from Public Works and the Public Works Director recommending that the City Council shall authorize the City Engineer to sign Amendment 1 for a movement of grant funds between tasks within agreement number WRFA-1921-ABERPW-0001. Mm -hmm. -E I move we adopt this report. Second. Motion was made and seconded to adopt this report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any aye. oppose? Motion carries. The report is adopted. All right. Next, we have a report from Public Works and the Public Works Director recommending that the City Council shall authorize the City Engineer to execute agreements with Gordon Thomas Honeywell for up to $22,500 for State Governmental Affairs Services and for up to $27,000 for Federal Governmental Affairs Services and to continue partnering with the City of Hoquiam to promote a joint legislative plan including the Aberdeen Hoquiam Flood Protection Project, North Shore Levee and wet the west segment of the North Shore Levee and the Aberdeen US-12 Highway Rail Separation Project. I move we adopt this report. Okay. Motion is made seconded to adopt this report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any oppose? Motion carries. The report is adopted. And next we have a report from Public Works and the Public Works Director recommending that the Public Works Director shall be authorized to execute task order number one through the on-call agreement with Gray and Osborne for professional services related to the wastewater treatment plant influent screening and conveyance project in the amount of $758,180. I move we adopt this report. Second. Motion is made and seconded to adopt this report. Is there any discussion? Uh, Mayor, under discussion, uh, it came up that this had actually already been signed by you, the mayor. Um, and therefore, I would like to make a motion to change this report to reflect that the mayor is authorized and not the public works director. Second. <laughs> motion was made and seconded to change this report. Is there any discussion? Sorry. <laughs> Seeing none, all in favor of the amendment, say aye. 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 Any oppose? Okay, the report is amended. I will accept the motion to adopt the amended report. So moved. Second. Motion is made and seconded to adopt the report as amended. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any oppose? The motion carries, the report is adopted as it was amended. Okay. 
And next we have a report from Public Works and the Public Works Director recommending that the Aberdeen City Council shall pass a resolution in support of the Aberdeen Hoquiam Flood Protection Project and the efforts of the cities of Aberdeen and Hoquiam to secure legislative funding for the project. I move we adopt this report. Okay. Motion well, is made and seconded to adopt this report. Is there any discussion? Uh, just under discussion, uh, this uh, is just, uh, coming up with a branding for the joint projects uh, that will make it easier for the lobbyists uh, to do their job uh, as they seek funding for them. Okay. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of this report say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? The motion carries. This report is adopted. And next we have a report from Public Works and the Public Works Director recommending that the Public Works Committee and the City Council shall declare vehicle number 155, a 1997 Chevrolet half-ton pickup as surplus and authorize Public Works to sell it at auction. I move we adopt this report. Second. Motion was made and seconded to adopt this report. Is there any discussion? Just under discussion, yes, it does run. <laughs> I was just thinking in my head, <laughs> Is there anybody here that wants to buy this? <clears throat> anyway, don't say anything bad about it. We want to send it to auction. Uh, <laughs> any other comments? Seeing none, all in favor of the report, say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. The report is adopted. And next we have a report from Public <coughs> Works and the Public Works Director recommending that the City Council shall authorize the Mayor to execute WSDOT Service Agreement GCB 3425 for the Aberdeen US-12 Highway Rail Separation Project. I move we adopt this report. Okay. Motion is made seconded to adopt this report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Motion carries, that report is adopted. And last report, we have a report from Public Works and Corporation Council recommending that the City Council approve an ordinance extinguishing of oil and mineral rights, which were initially reserved in Ordinance 5067 in 1975 for Grays Harbor Tax Parcel number 10101033006001 at 701 East Market Street. I move we adopt this report. Second. Motion was made seconded to adopt this report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The report is adopted. Alrighty, moving on to resolutions. First, we have a resolution adopting the City of Aberdeen supplement to the 2018 Grays Harbor County Multi-Jurisdictional Hazard Mitigation Plan. I move we accept this resolution. Did somebody second? second. second. Motion, was made... <laughs> Sorry. Motion was made and seconded to approve this resolution. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 This is Aye. resolution 2021-11. Okay, it is approved. And next we have a resolution supporting legislative efforts of the cities of Aberdeen and Hoquiam in seeking funding for the Aberdeen Hoquiam Flood Protection Project. I move we accept this resolution. Motion was made and seconded to accept this resolution. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. This resolution is approved. Resolution 2021-12. Okay. Ready. And now we have an ordinance. Uh, we have the first reading of bill number 21-03, an ordinance extinguishing mineral rights of the easterly 10 feet of D Street, south of Market Street, Aberdeen, Grays Harbor County, State of Washington. And I'm gonna muck this up, Patrice, so I'm gonna probably need your help. So I move that we accept the first reading and move to the second. <laughs> Accept the first reading, move to the second, the ordinance as described. Thank you. So moved. OK. 
Okay, motion second. is made and seconded to uh, approve of the first reading of this ordinance. Is there any discussion? Quick question, Mr. Mayor. Um, it, this one, what you read tonight, mentions only mineral rights on, and the word, word oil, which was in the description and so on in other places, isn't there. It is intended to extinguish oil and mineral rights both. So it sounds like you're offering uh, an appropriate amendment to correct the motion. Yeah, uh, please. Second. I so move. Second. Motion was made and seconded to amend the uh, first reading of this ordinance. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the amendment say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. I will accept the motion to approve the ordinance, first reading of the ordinance as amended. So moved. Second. Motion was made and seconded to approve the first reading of this ordinance as amended. Is there any discussion? Under discussion, uh, it says here D Street. Is that correct? <laughs> I mean, it just. I, that that is the location of the intersection where it where it's at the end of. Yeah, I was thinking that and was that, okay. Okay. I'll, I'm happy to go back and verify well, that for the second reading. For some reason, I was thinking that was B Street, but B Street is two blocks further down. Yep. So I get so I'm, it's my mistake. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the ordinance, the first reading of this ordinance, say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. The, the first reading of this ordinance is approved. Uh, the next council meeting at the second reading will be a public hearing on this ordinance. And Mayor, that is all from Public Works. Thank you, sir. Public Safety Chair Andrews. Oh, public safety met this evening. Um, let's see, from the fire department, there's an item on the agenda tonight. It's under special agenda items though, I won't be covering it, but it's an MOU between the city of Aberdeen and the local union 2639 for financial support for qualified fire departments to attend paramedic school. We brought this up before, uh, we're having a really hard time hiring paramedics. So we're going to um, work to sending some of our existing staff to become certified as per paramedics. Um, the fire service specialist has been out there in the field. She's going to start doing a report for us just to keep us updated on her public uh, interactions. Um, she made contact with 32 homes in Aberdeen to assess life safety issues, installed 12 smoke detectors. So in 2021 alone, 70 homes have been visited and 26 smoke detectors detectors in all have been installed. Over at the mass vaccination site, they passed 10,000 doses administered last week. And there'll be two dates this week, Friday and Saturday. And they're requesting everybody go to the public health website to register for your vaccine. Over on the police side, there are um, no items on the agenda. They're still working on the criminal justice feasibility study. Um, they've been doing a lot of follow-up meetings with Coast Design. They are gonna be coming back soon for that second phase two funding um, that we've talked about before. Uh, April 23rd, the chief sent a memo out about um, a road trip to Oregon City. I'm trying to work out that I can go that. Um, one thing that is concerned, if you saw the chief on the news tonight on King 5, um, that House Bill 1054, currently as written, um, 
are trying to put a band on MRAPs, which is that mine resistant ambush protected item that we received from the government at no charge. And if passed in its current form, we'll no longer be allowed to use it. And it's the only armored vehicle within Grace Harbor. Um, I don't know. I mean, I know it looks scary and, you know, if you were to see it coming down the street at you, but this piece of equipment is very integral in protecting our police department. You know, we have had numerous occasions where we've had people barricaded in their homes and rather than our officers being out exposed to possible gunfire, they're able to take shelter behind this and not get hit. Um, and again, it's the only one in Grace Harbor County. And this is primarily targeting the ones that have been donated. You know, the larger cities can afford to buy these rigs. So, you know, it's not gonna affect them, but for some reason they're targeting the ones that were donated. So, you know, if everybody could reach out to your legislator and tell them you oppose House Bill 1054, that would be, you know, wonderful and turn into King Five's news to see our own police chief uh, on the news. I saw him when I was having lunch today. It was a really, it was a good story and covered how the rural areas are the ones that are really impacted by this, um, that are gonna lose vital equipment. So let me go to our first item. It's our first reading of bill number 21-01 an ordinance adopting the 2018 editions of the International Existing Building Code, the International Building Code, the International Residential Code, and the International Mechanical Code, the Uniform Public Code, the International Fire Code, the National Fuel Gas Code, the 2018 Washington State Energy Code Residential as adopted by Chapter 51-11R WAC, the 2018 Washington State Energy Code Commercial as adopted by Chapter 51-11C WAC and the 2014 Liquefied Petroleum Gas Code amending Chapters 15.4, 15.08, 15.12, 15.13, 15.14, 15.12, and 15.70 of the Aberdeen Municipal Code being Ordinance 6639 as amended. I move we accept the first reading. Second. Motion is made and seconded to accept the first reading <clears throat> of this ordinance. Is there any discussion? I think she's reading it. Council Member Ellis. Um, I just wanted to make a correction that it was 15.04, not 15.4. So noted. <laughs> it's it's written correctly, whether I speak it correctly. So the, the minutes will reflect as such. It's a lot of reading. I know. <laughs> okay. I put my readers on. <clears throat> Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the first reading of this bill. Say hi. I Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. The first and reading of this ordinance is passed, has passed, and and the second reading will be a public hearing. Yes, the next meeting will be a second reading in public hearing. And that it, is all from public safety. Okay, thank you. Special agenda items, Council President Shaw. Thank you, Mayor Shave. Um, we don't have any public hearings under special agenda items tonight, but we do have a couple of reports. We have a report from personnel and the human resources director recommending that the city council approve the request to promote and increase the pay for Josh Brankovich to a wastewater treatment plant operator effective March 1st, 2021. I move we adopt this report. Second. Motion was made and seconded to adopt this report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. The report is adopted. 
Thank you. Um, the second report from personnel tonight is a report um, from personnel and the human resources director recommending that the Aberdeen City Council approve the MOU related to pandemic school with IAFF Local 2639 effective upon passage. I move we adopt this report. Second. Second. Motion was made and seconded to adopt this report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, this report is adopted. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we have no proclamations tonight, but we do have a resolution of the city of Aberdeen supporting the proposed emergency shelter agreement between Grays Harbor County and Chaplains on the Harbor. I move that we adopt this resolution. Second. second. Motion was made and seconded to adopt this resolu resolution or approve. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, the resolution is hmm. approved. Resolution number 2021-13. Okay, thank you. Mayor. Yes, Council President Shaw. Um, under under resolutions, uh, I know there wasn't um, very much time for discussion, but I would just like to um, thank um, Councilman Kennedy for the research he did to bring this to the council tonight. It was um, much appreciated. Thank you. Okay, there's no ordinances here. Moving on to appointments. The uh, first... Uh, Item is the selection of a city council member, new member for Ward 1, position 1, that will replace David Haviland, who resigned January 25th. Two candidates, M Melvin Taylor and Jesse Cole, are uh, uh, sent in applications for the position. Um, uh, City Clerk Sol, will you take a roll call vote to the council on their choice? First, um, do I just list each name and then do the roll call? Um, this is taking motion. Just do the roll that's call. How it, that's Perfect. how it has been done in the past. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Melvin Taylor, Councilmember Andrews. So are we saying yes or no, or are we saying their name? Because usually well, we, say their usually name. we say their name. What I was going to yeah. suggest is that we have two candidates, Cole or Taylor. And uh, mm -hmm. if if the city clerk would just call the, the roll call, you can uh, say your vote, Cole or Taylor. Okay. Yeah, that's how you've done it. You want Andrews to go now? City Clerk Sol, are you ready for Tony I'm, Andrews? Yep, I'm unmuted now. Um, Council Member Andrews? She's muted. Taylor. Council Member Ellis? Taylor. Council Member Francie? Taylor. Council Member Gordon? Taylor. Councilmember Koshman. Taylor. Councilmember Kennedy. Cole. Councilmember Mackey. Taylor. Councilmember Richrod. Taylor. Councilmember Ross. Taylor. Councilmember Shaw. Taylor. Councilmember Short. Taylor. So that would be all council members, um, less one for Taylor and one for Cole. Thank you. So uh, the new council member is uh, Melvin Taylor, who will be seated in the first ward council seat. Um, I guess that's about all we can do here <laughs> on the computer. Uh, we can't have much of a ceremony or anything, but Mr. Taylor, if you can hear me still, 
you are the new council member. And on behalf of the council, I want to thank both candidates for their interest and willingness to serve the city. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, lastly, uh, I have two appointments for the Building Code Commission. We haven't heard that name for a while uh, because it's been a long time since the Building Code Commission has actually had a meeting. They're kind of far and few in between. Uh, but we need to utilize that board and I need two council members to uh, uh, fill up seats, fill empty seats on it. Uh, Alan, Council Member Richrod, Council Member Mackey uh, want to do that. And so I would like to appoint them to the Building Code Commission Board with the council's approval. So moved. Second. Well, so it's made and seconded to approve of Alan Richrod and John Mackey to serve on the Building Code Commission Board. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Our new board members there will be contacted by Lisa Scott uh, for your mission being you decided to take it. Thanks. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I think that's it. That's the end of our agenda. Um, Mayor Shave? Yes. I, I'm not sure if this is the appropriate place to bring it up, but um, do we want to clarify the record and give council member Short an opportunity to vote on the vouchers so that um, she's not reflected as absent? Can we do that? Can we go back and fix it? Um, I don't think it's necessary because it was unanimous minus just... Council Member Short's vote. So okay, um, we Good don't need try. to go back. So I'm going to open the floor to City Council comment period. Anybody on the, oh, Council Member Andrews. Well, hi everybody. So I just wanna, you know, with COVID, everything got canceled last year, all of the festivals. And I'll tell you that I've been helping out with the Aberdeen Founders Day and the Aberdeen Art Walk. So I will tell you that we've come up with a plan to on how we can have the parade. Cause we're gonna twist it up. We're gonna flip it around, but we have a plan. And, you know, so we're going to reverse it, but you'll see, it's kind of cool. And for the art walk, we're going to move that over to Morrison, use the entire trail so we can space everybody out rather than have them all on Broadway. So we're working on both festivals so that we can put a nice socially distance. We're going to work with the parks department, but we're planning on right now and make both of them happening. Founders Day will be July 3rd. Art Walk will be July 31st. But just pencil those in. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, Founders Day was what date again? Third. July 3rd. Well, July 3rd. Yes. Okay, anybody else? Council Member Kennedy. Thank you very much. Um, first, I just wanted to, you know, really thank the people that uh, assisted with the resolution earlier. I think that will uh, go a long way to uh, show our support for uh, the current plans that are going on in the county to address this uh, homeless situation and uh, get our unsheltered community um, you know, the help that they need and uh, also to, you know, help clean up our downtown. And, um, you know, it was, uh, it, was, it was a long project, <laughs> uh, but I think it's really, it's gonna be really helpful. Um, the other thing um, I just wanted to bring up, I just wanted to mention based off of one of the public comments is that, um, you know, when it comes to city staff issues, 
the council really doesn't have any um, say in that. Uh, we the, the legislative does not, you know, really have any any bearing on city staff. That is the executive. So, if people have uh, issues with some specific member of staff, they should really, uh, you know, bring that to the executive because um, you know we we don't really have much say over that. Um, and other than that, uh, I'll hand the floor back. Thank you. Anybody else in the council? Council Member Ellis. Yes, I wanted to um, thank Denise Anderson for speaking earlier about um, the, uh, the union members that she represents. And to also say that the city of Port Angeles has a ordinance in the works that they are expecting to review at their April, first April meeting. And it would be interesting to see what they come up with. And um, if that's something that perhaps provides an even better model for us to consider um, going forward. And then on another note, I heard Dr. Fauci use a, a very apt description for where we are in the COVID process. And that is we're in the eye of, of the storm of a hurricane where you look up and it's beautiful blue sky and life seems wonderful. But in the next 20 minutes is another huge front coming. And um, so don't, don't let your guard down, keep wearing masks keep washing hands, social distancing, all those things that I know we're all getting sick of, but um, we gotta, we gotta keep, uh, keep at it so that a second wave doesn't come and set us all back uh, tragically. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on the council? Council member Rich Rod. Um, I'll echo that, and uh, I don't really want to be the one throwing the water on it, but um, <clears throat> I'm, I heard a report through the CDC today that the uh, new strains are, they've arrived, and uh, there's an uptick in COVID cases in this country, again, uh, not necessarily in the state, but anyway. Uh, they're, they're coming back around. Um, I did want to mention that I had a conversation, a very nice conversation uh, interview with uh, a member of a study team out of the Washington, out of Washington University in St. Louis. And they are one of the study teams that the CDC goes to, to uh, do research for them on particular issues. And, uh, uh, related to healthcare, essentially, but she was talking to me. I don't know why she emailed me, but she was talking to me about how the, uh, the city council and uh, the city government of Aberdeen arrives at decisions. And we had a very nice conversation and she was uh, impressed with the city of Aberdeen. And, um, and I, I told her a little bit about the history and she had no idea. And um, so uh, she was uh, she was very interested in in the way we do things, especially in comparison to other government types or several types of city government. So, um, anyway, so she had never been to the Northwest, but she says, I'm, as soon as this, this pandemic is over, she says, I'm going to come out to the Pacific Northwest. So, that was interesting. Okay, thank you, Councilmember Kennedy. Sorry, I, I just have two quick, uh, quick things that I forgot about. Uh, first of all, uh, welcome to our new council member, uh, Mr. Taylor. Uh, we had two good candidates, so uh, I'm really happy to see that position filled and looking forward to working with you. And the other thing I wanted to do was just give a quick uh, uh, thank you to the city staff that has been uh, taking care of Tassel. It has, it is, as I've said before, it's not something that was ever in your job description. And uh, I imagine if it was, you probably wouldn't have taken the position. So for those of you that have been going down and uh, taking care of that, um, 
you know, thank you very much for the efforts you have put into that. Council President Shaw. So um, maybe just to piggyback on Council Member Kennedy's some um, remarks on Castle, like yes, all the work and effort that our city staff have done at Castle is appreciated, but it is fair comment from members of the public to um, to question the appearance and and what it, what it looks like. And I know, Mayor, you were sharing a little bit earlier. Can you share in general with anybody who might still be looking what your plan is for cleaning that up? Uh, well, we went down there just today again and uh, took pictures of the inside of the camp and are um, uh, in the process of determining if what we saw in some of the worst cases qualifies for um, uh, removal from the camp. Uh, because of health is, and, and wellness issues. So um, uh, if we could get uh, some, some help that could be a, on a regular basis in there, um, first of all, the, 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 there's a lot of stuff that needs to be hauled to the dump or dealt with that shouldn't be in the camp. Well, maybe I should have put it that way first. Um, there's bicycle parts like crazy. Uh, there's, uh, like I said, there's four shopping carts that need to be uh, brought back to the stores. Um, there's an awful lot of garbage. There's a lot of, there's actually quite a bit of um, old food garbage on the ground. Um, and I don't think there's some of it, I don't really feel comfortable with, uh, having staff have to clean it up, but there's a lot of it that staff can do in there. In other words, uh, if, if we were to, uh, add anybody, uh, temporaries uh, or anything, but, uh, there's a lot of it that I would prefer uh, to have somebody like a professional team that comes in and cleans um, with their professional equipment, because I, I wouldn't want to di direct anybody to get involved in that unless they actually knew what they were doing. So we've done that before. Do you think if we clean it up again that we have the ability to manage it so that it doesn't get like this again? I think that's, for the most part, impossible. I think uh, um, it's my feelings that most of the cam uh, uh, campers in, the, in there are not really capable of uh, keeping their site clean. And so it would be a constant thing for staff. And a lot of the problems you run into that takes a lot of time and allows the mess to uh, expand is uh, you go in there and find a uh, stuffed animal that's fairly large and it's ripped open and it's been sitting in the rain for weeks and it's a terrible looking mess and want to take it and put it in the dumpster, uh, you'll find that you get a whole different, uh, you'll get an attitude adjustment from the owner of that. Hmm. It's, it's, it has value to them for whatever the reason. And so you can't just help yourself and, and take something like that and put it in the dumpster. There has to be a process you go through and uh, it's, it's, it's a bit difficult. So when we moved the tents around and repositioned things, we had a pretty good opportunity then 
uh, to get at some of this stuff and convince uh, the owners of it to either throw it away or put it in storage or whatever. And, and there was a lot of the area that was cleaned up because we even built some new uh, pallet platforms and replaced some of the old yucky ones uh, uh, and repositioned everything in it. It was a good opportunity right now. Uh, since then, it, you would hardly know we'd ever been in there. Uh, it's just that quick. Uh, they take advantage of everything you can think of. We have, uh, I call them condominiums. We have a couple of condominiums in there where they've taken tarps and expanded their city tent about fourfold and have the tarps hooked to the fence. Um, it just doesn't help with the appearance of anything. But I think if we had some help, somebody that that department could uh, rely on to help, uh, we, we could make it look a whole lot better than it does now, a whole lot better. There's some fence we want to adjust again. Uh, if we had somebody that could put the time in, we could fix a lot of the, uh, the uh, fabric that's on the fence. Uh, t tighten it up again and, and and which is another thing that we just recently did but it didn't last very long so are the rules not being enforced anymore that's correct Why? because of because of the uh proclamations there's no teeth in the rules we can't kick anybody out of there but well, we have rules about how much personal belongings you can have right and if you're if they're not contained in their area, where I thought we have gone in before and cleaned that stuff out. I've seen uh, Patrice's hand up. Where'd she go? She's up there. I'm here. <laughs> uh, so the rules are there. Um, I believe uh, the initial thought was that community development was uh, the staff to do the enforcing. There were some challenges related to their staffing abilities during COVID. I, I won't, I know Lisa has been very busy and she's pointed that out a lot. Part of the challenge with the enforcement is that really kind of our stick to go with the carrot, you know, the carrot being a place to stay, the stick being you no longer have a place to stay has been severely limited by the COVID restrictions. Um, and so that's where um, Mayor Shave and Lisa have been talking about uh, the only way that that uh, evic and that eviction can take place is if they are uh, basically a, a, an immediate threat or harm to themselves or, or others. Uh, and I'm misquoting the language, but that's kind of the the baseline of it. And uh, I know I have, and probably Lisa has as well, been very active with the folks that we are interacting with, with respect to what's going on with the eviction, with the eviction need. Um, our city council, you all decided over uh, right about a year ago that there was an end to it. We couldn't continue to afford to do it. And then we ran into a notice from the state AG's office that said, you can't kick people out unless it's this extra step. So that's, and I think that, that as it became closer to the end, the, to the deadline for ending it, I think we thought we were going to be able to um, just close it. And I don't think that that's happened. So I'm not sure, that's my interpretation of, of where we are with enforcement is, our teeth are pretty limited to what we can what we can do. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Lisa, did you I see you come on? Did you have a comment? No, I, I mean, I, I understand more than most how absolutely frustrating it is. Um, 
and we are going to go down and do a general sweep again. As Patrice men mentioned, it's life health safety issues that are construed very narrowly. So we don't have a lot of flexibility um, and ab abiding by those. So the, really the teeth in the whole thing was the, the ability to evict for not following the rules. And we can't do that in the way we used to. So that's changed significantly. In the I was meeting earlier tonight, Murray, it was also mentioned that part of the problem is that the funding to help manage that was um, cut from the budget. Yes. So, um, I, what does the committee need to yeah. do if, if there's no, I mean, as if I, is that funding reimbursable through the, any of the state or federal money we're getting because of uh, we can't evict or if the we funding. Do the funding that we had before came from the CARES Act funds. Well, well the funds that we had for the two people we were we had in there were split between parks and code enforcement. Stacy could for maybe a speak a little bit more to uh, whether or not that the cleaners were eligible for any of the CARES money. I that I don't know, but we had had them in the budgets uh last year and then this year they got cut from our budget so we don't have them and public works uh brought back a crew and their primary focus was keeping the downtown and the right of ways clean stacy yeah so this is stacy uh Yes, you can get reimbursed through FEMA right now at 75%. You have to go through uh, the process of, if we're gonna contract with an agency, then we would send it out for bid. They'd have to pay prevailing wage. Um, there's some things we'd have to do. It's not that you, it's not doable, but it's not as easy as calling express personnel and having two people sent over to help. I mean, it's gone on this long. So, I mean, how much longer is really to take those few extra steps? Yeah. Well, that was my question too. Is it, isn't there a point at which we close it and it doesn't reopen? Is that a correct assessment? This was okay. always a temporary thing. What I've been told is the, the government, the governor just, uh, uh, advanced his uh, uh, proclamations till uh, June 31st, mm. the end of June. And so we can't kick anybody out of there. Uh, is it, did I make it sound too simple, Patrice? No, I think, so if, I wanna make sure I'm answering the question that was being asked. It is my understanding from the very beginning by the name of it is it is the temporary alternative shelter location. Uh, and that it was the direction from council last year that it be closed, we were done. And so it is my understanding that the intent of city council as a, both in the initial setup and as of now is as soon as the city is legally able to close the, the location, we will. Thank you. Yeah. And, and right now we're not able to because as Mayor Shave said, the eviction moratorium has been extended along with others to uh, the end of June of this year. Council Member Kennedy. Thank you. Um, just to go back to, uh, what uh, Council Member Andrews w had brought up. So between now and that that date that the, the shelter uh, you know could close, you know what can what can we do? Can we get you know can we start that process to get somebody in to help keep it clean and help keep it uh, you know manageable so that you know there isn't you know so much debris and so much stuff. Uh, you know, that, that, that's causing a lot of strife with community members. Uh, 
<laughs> I was just holding my breath. Was that a question <laughs> for me? Um, I can provide the information to Lisa if she wants to hire employees to work for her to do the work um, in the tassel through the FEMA program. Uh, what I have a question then. Uh, the, uh, the, the money that's just re been released that we haven't got yet, uh, which is 3.2 million or we're not sure exactly how much could be as much as 3.6 million. Um, it, it was my understanding that that would be eligible to use some of that for something like this. We could pay for the cost of keeping the tassel camp open until the governor's proclamation goes, uh, is ended with that fund, those funds. So Lisa? It wasn't just tassel either. Um, Stacy, uh, the park director and myself, we, we both utilized the help throughout the summer for uh, overgrown grass projects, mowing projects that the parks had, picking up garbage and different things. So um, we, we utilize those two people for, for several other things as well. But what I'm saying is, can't we, couldn't we at least keep the, t the tassel portion of it paid for by those funds? And, and if you utilize these people for uh, code enforcement projects or parks projects, those portions could be paid for out of your budgets. Right. So the reimbursement for the staff would own that, that reimbursement would only be eligible if they were doing work for the unsheltered. And yes, it was a, it was eligible through the CARES Act last time. I haven't looked at the guidelines this round. I know Patricia has, but I would assume if it was eligible last time, it'd be eligible this time as well. But, can but, but we couldn't send them off on a code enforcement grass trimming project. Correct. And, we could not and get reimbursed for that. It would have to be spread around. But my point is... Um, we could really utilize this to help clean, keep that tassel camp in better looking condition um, and do it with some help of these, uh, these funds coming from the government, uh, the federal government, uh, rather than absorb, hit, getting hit with the cost of it ourselves, uh, 100%. So. It, it would be a solution. Council Member Ellis. Um, Mayor Schaaf, if the um, contract with chaplains on the harbor is approved, would that allow us to, um, to transfer folks from the tassel camp over to chaplains on the harbor so that then the camp could be closed? We cannot make the decision to, to just transfer them. They would have to go. They have to do it. They would have to go sign up for chaplains on the harbor. And we're also months away from that happening, I think. Is and I, know? yeah. Sorry, I can't speak for chaplains either, but I would. I would almost think that their primary focus would be getting those people that have no shelter in the shelter first. And that's not necessarily those people in Tassel. Any other questions? Council President Shaw. So um, how about this for an idea? And I, I just tossed this out for you to consider with your staff mayor, provided that it is um, reimbursable um, could we um, hire a professional firm, put the tenants on notice that on such and such a date, we're going to come in, and if you've not claimed it, if it's still out there, it's going gonna, it's gonna to disappear. It's going to be considered not wanted, and put out a request for a professional firm to come in and help us get it back in ship shape. And then I know you mentioned this before, I'm trying to bring all the pieces together. And then we might, sounds like we only need one person 
to help maintain it because when we had two, they were out doing other stuff. So well, could we maybe do something like that and, the, and do it sooner rather than later? The reason I always mention two people is because it's, it's, a, it, it's like it's the safe way to uh, do anything. You got two people, one's covering each other's back. If something happened. It, but we have security there. It might cover your backside. But anyway, uh, and the answer that I know of to the other portion of what you brought up is it's a it's a real tough deal to touch their belongings. Um, the rules of the camp is you can only have so much stuff uh, out. It is described pretty specifically what you can have outside your tent. Now, whether we can follow that guideline under the proclamation conditions, I don't see why not. And, and you know, the other thing, you know, the other thing that was on my mind is, you know, I, you know, it is a tough thing, but you know what, we know that we're dealing with people who have issues and sometimes, you know, you got to just pull the bandaid and we're not being heartless. We're trying to be safe. That place can't be a dump. It's not healthy. So um, I, I think we've done it before and we didn't have, there were no real dire consequences. And, and but the other thing that was on my mind and all is that it seems like we've kind of spread this out among multiple departments and maybe even um, if we do get this extra help and it's charged from another fund, maybe it, we've already got public works is managing all the other areas out there. Maybe they also could um, um, be the uh, um, uh, department that does this too. It's kind of just bring it all into one place. <laughs> Rick just passed out. <laughs> <laughs> Before we go there, Rick, before we go there, um, l let me re uh, recognize uh, Patrice uh, um, with maybe possibly a comment on your previous portion of your question. So thank you, Mayor Shave. With respect to the doing a cleanup, there is a uh, process that was established and a notification process and all of that was established a long time ago at this point it feels like uh, either that or last week I'm not really sure <laughs> um, that public works and the police and parks and uh, code enforcement all were involved in as far as um, providing folks with notification when we were going to come in and do a cleanup and uh, notification about you need to identify what is going to fit into this area that you signed that you were going to accept these rules and everything else goes help us sort out we think this is put it in this pile if it's if if you think this is personal stuff that you need to store and we'll you know kind of sort out the rest um, as need be and it is and it is extraordinarily challenging and there are uh there are folks who appear to be collecting things because that's the only thing they can do. And so are fiercely protective of their personal items. Um, but yeah, we have done that in the past and we can and all it takes is time and all it takes is figuring out where the priority is um, as far as that versus other. And I can, talk, I can say that really easily because it's not my physical time and it's not my staff who go down there but I do uh, see the folks at Tassel and, and uh, when staff is out there, they are out there all day, every day for several days in a row. And it's only when there's somebody literally there every day, at least once a day walking through the entire, at least once a day walking through the entire location, is there a kind of a semblance of uh, bringing it back to a, a healthier location. So, I understand that we had a hundred yeah. some tents down there at one point, and but now we have some resources. It looks like that might not require so much um, staff time. Let me recognize uh, Rick because I'm sure he's got a comment. <laughs> You're muted. Unmute. Better. Yep. I just want to say that we have not been involved in Tassel for over a year. We haven't been down there 
patrolling, removing things. Um, absolutely. If council's asking public works to take over, we will take it over. We would do our best. Um, I think we can do a better job. So can you take it over with what you have or do we need uh, another? From With direction from the council, I can. Say that again, please. With direction from the council, I believe I can. Using the CARES Act or whatever federal resources for the stuff that public works can't pay for, right? Well, that's. I think that's a month away. I, I think we would be, if we're directed, I think we're willing to take it over immediately. President Shaw? Yes. I would like to make a motion to refer this matter to the Public Works Committee for further review. Second. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Motion is made and seconded to refer this matter to the Public Works Committee for further review. Is there any discussion? Way to wrap it up, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> it's 1017. <laughs> Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. This matter will be referred to the Public Works Committee. Okay, is there anything else for tonight's meeting? If anybody raises your hand, I'm blocking out your screen. Okay. I, didn't... <laughs> I move we adjourn. Second. For the love of God, I second it. <laughs> Everybody. Motion is made and seconded to adjourn. If there's no, uh, uh, nobody opposes, I will adjourn this meeting. Okay. Good night. Good night. Have a good night, everybody. Go to bed. Yeah, <laughs>